first thing I'm going to do is the easiest thing all day. I just need to get your name first and last and the correct spelling so I have it on tape and can set my audio level. So okay. you are? Margaret. And last name? Hollinger, H-O-L-L-I-N-G-E-R. And where, if I can be so rude as to ask, where and when were you born? Oh, I, I was born in North Dakota, 4th of June, 1910. So you just had your birthday. <laughs> when, so where in North Dakota? Uh, well, uh, 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 close to the border, uh, in the southern part. Was there a name for the town? Oh, um, what? I think it was Leffer. Okay. L-E-F-O-R. And, and, and did you grow up there or did you move? No, I grew up there. You grew up there. Yes. So your mom and dad, who were they and where were they from? Well, they were from Europe. Uh, I think the Austrian-Hungarian area they came from. Mm -hmm. And what was your dad's name? My dad, uh, <laughs> Ignaz Holland, Hollinger, I-G-N-A-T-Z. And how about mom? Mother, oh gosh, I don't, don't even know mother's maiden name. What, what was her first name though? Teresa. Teresa. Yeah. And was your dad a farmer or? No. He worked in town. Uh, he worked for the county most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to get to World War II in, shortly, but I'm going to back up just a little bit to kind of set up World War II. Do you remember the Depression? Yes, but it, it really didn't. It didn't affect us at all. But I remember, well, my mother used to feed a lot of them. They'd go through, because we weren't very far from the railroad track. And they'd go through, and mother fed many, many of them. Yes, I re remember that. So even though your family wasn't wanting for food, you saw a lot of others? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's interesting how different times are because I talked to one person whose father had a barn and let the, the hobos, they called them, the hobos stay in the barn and, and his daughter uh, would go out and feed him and he thought, you know, never worried about him uh -huh. causing trouble. Yeah, that's, I think that's, that's how it was. Yeah, because that's mother fed him and was never worried about him. Now, you come from a big family, right? A ten. <laughs> and you're the oldest? oldest. Uh-huh. So, what were you like as a girl? Were you a tomboy, or were you a girly girl, or...? Well, I think I was sort of... I think my mother and dad were a little strict with us. We couldn't go and play with the neighbors. The neighbor kids had to come over. Because my dad always said, mother didn't have enough time to argue with the other mother. Her kids did this, hers did that. So they always had to come over to our place to play. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you never got in trouble. It was the other kids that were always causing yeah. trouble. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get into nursing? Um, well, when I graduated from high school, there was only two things you could do. That was uh, be a nurse or uh, uh, sort of a, a housekeeper, work for other families. And none of that appealed to me because I really did. I guess my mother and dad really didn't impress us very much on that. We were just growing up. My mother and dad were real, real good to us. So did you go to nursing school then? Or? Yes, I went, I went to nursing school. I went 
to nurse the school because it cost only $32 to get into nursing school. And that's why I went into nursing school. And that today sounds like not much, but that still was quite a bit, wasn't it? Oh, oh yes, sure it was. But I, I had worked for a family. Uh, I worked for them for a month. And I think that was the, a month's pay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So where was the nursing school? Uh, Bismarck, North Dakota. Yeah. Yeah. Our school was really very, very good. They were up to date. Our sisters were real strict with us, but we had got a good, good education. Yeah. How, was it so? It was run by the nuns. Yes. Who who ran the what what? Um, uh, I want to say congregation, not congregation. But oh, what, oh gosh, I don't even know what uh, what. Was there a name for the school? Uh, there must have been, but I can't think of it. That's okay. It's a long time ago. So were you, you were pretty young then, you were right out of high school when you started? Yes. Mm -hmm. And how long of a program was it? Was it a... Oh, uh, I really don't know. I think it was a four-year program. Yeah. And was that within a hospital? Was there a hospital right there? Uh, that... Yes. It, uh, it was a hospital at Bismarck, North Dakota. Yeah. And what type of things did you do for training? Because you said it was pretty disciplined. I bet you they put you through a... Oh, yes. We got a, we got a real nice training. Yeah, they were kind of strict with us. But we were, uh, we were very modern when it came uh, to uh, report our credits. Our credits were individual which was very, very rare. But our sisters were up and about uh, with things. So really that was, um, if you were good at, uh, in school, that really showed. Yeah. Did and I always found uh, uh, schoolwork easy. It was never hard for me. Really? Even even in grade school, it's never hard for me. Did you think that you were just going to be a nurse working in a hospital when you got done with school, or? Oh, well, we weren't going to be working when we were twenty eight years old. My gosh, no! One of our nurses was twenty eight years old. Oh no, we! I laugh about that so often. We wouldn't be working when we're 28 years old. <laughs> we worked long after that. So you thought you would work a couple of years and, yes. and that 28 was so old. Um, that's, uh, that's right. <laughs> oh, I tell you, it's wonderful when you're young, what you think about. <laughs> <laughs> did you train to be a surgical nurse, or what? What did they? Or did you train? Oh, I was. A, yeah, I was a surgical nurse. I was real sharp at that. So, how did you get into the army? How did I get into the army? My gosh, I can't even remember. There, I, I think there were two choices. I could join the Army or something else. Oh, I know, the VA. Well, I didn't want to join the VA because you were always just a plain general nurse. And that's how come a friend of mine really got me into the Army. Yeah. He, uh, he decided... Uh, he was a boyfriend to all of us when we were in training. His father and mother owned half of North Dakota. Uh, he was 
a real nice fellow. He looked after all of us, not just me, but all of us, yeah. <laughs> Hans, Hans was wonderful. <laughs> so when you went in the Army, it was long before World War II started, right? Uh, no, I think World War II had started. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And we were really supposed to be be going overseas, but uh, when we came back from Europe, we landed in New York. And when we la when we landed, that's when uh, peace was declared. So we didn't have to go to Japan. Yeah. So you'd been over in the European. Yeah. Theater then. Yeah, just the European. So what, do, do you remember the first time that you saw war? Well, of course, we had to take care of uh, any and all that. Well, we used to watch them shoot down the enemy, you know. Um, but we had to take care of, take care of any and all. So, and I don't think they caused us any trouble. I think they were glad. You, uh, you changed history because prior to World War II, nurses and women were never that close to the war front, and you no. were, you were. Oh no! Oh no! We were right, right in back of them. Yeah, we were very close to them. Yeah. How hard was that as a nurse? Because here you are, a fairly young woman, in war, and I assume you dealt with a variety of injuries. Uh, well, you know, you get so wrapped up in it that. Uh, it becomes part of what you're doing. Yeah. We had, we, we had nice doctors too. That helped. And I was a surgical nurse, so I was always in the oper operating room. And like I say, back, back in the States, it would have taken three days preparation of the patient before we'd operate on them. And here we took them right off <coughs> the field, took care of them. They were in the, in the tents. The poor things, all they had was just one blanket to cover them. They were on army cots. They never complained. I think of that so often. I think of that so often. All they had was just one blanket. And we had a little bitsy stove. Well, you were from here to there, and you didn't know there was a stove around. Yeah, but we didn't, really, we didn't have any, uh, uh, anyone uh, die. They all went on to, to England and then back to the States. That was, they were on the field today and tomorrow they were on their way to uh, England. Wow. Very, very rapid. It's, it's fascinating because I just read today the statistics. Because of the medicine that you brought into the battlefield, you're exactly right. Very few of them. Yeah. You increased the level of care uh -huh. so much. Yeah. We had, uh, we had uh, a landing pad, pad so the planes could land. Yeah. 
I think we were very progressive. I think we were very progressive. Were you on the move all the time? Uh huh. We moved about every week. <laughs> I always say we spent every week on a new hill. <laughs> so would you spend about a week at a time? Once you set up, you would stay there about a uh, About a week, yeah. So what was your um, medical facility like? What did you have? Well, I don't think we lacked for any medicine. <coughs> the United States Army really was very progressive. So your job was to stabilize them, is that right? Oh. And then you would ship them to... Oh, uh, yeah. yes, I mean, they'd come to our, our hospital and after they were able to travel some more, then we'd send them to England and then stateside. Being that close to the battle, were you afraid? No, I don't think we were. Uh, we were so busy that uh, we were never frightened. We used to go out and watch them shoot down the foreign <coughs> oh, planes. But uh, no, we weren't afraid. I guess they they didn't <laughs> let us think about being afraid. <laughs> they kept us so busy. <laughs> I was going to say, it sounds like you were probably either operating or moving. Is That's that... right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So did they move you, did they make you march or trucks or jeeps? No, no. no. We didn't have to. We were on trucks. Yeah. And what about your quarters, where you slept? Where, where did you sleep? Uh, well, they, we slept in tents. Yeah. Yeah. Were they big tents? or? Pardon me? Were they big tents? Did you have roommates? and? Oh, yeah. They were big tents. Yeah. And our... Um, we didn't have our our tents ditched. We uh, they were just set up, so of course the wind blew in. But we felt sorry for our corpsmen because they were just as tired as we were, and so we made it very easy for them. Yeah. <coughs> so. Did the, the, the corpsmen, did they, they went into battle and would bring the yeah. soldiers back? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we had, well, they did come back to us anyway. Many people injured, I don't think, because they didn't come back to us, uh, except to be transferred back to England. But that was a, a swift operation. Yeah. Was your was your operating room a tent also? That, uh, yeah, we had we had an operating room in tents. Yes. Wow. So was it tough to keep a sterile environment, or did you not worry about it in war? Oh no, I think we had a, a sterile environment. <laughs> yeah. We had um, we had very nice staff. Our our staff was real nice. Uh, we had one of our staff members <laughs> uh, worked in the operating room, and they wanted to know how he and I got along. He says, "Well." All Margaret does, she just asks me my data rank. <laughs> and of course, 
I outranked all of them. <laughs> she just asked me, and I did a rank. <laughs> oh, he was so funny about that. Because they wanted to know how he and I got along. He, well, I guess we got along just fine. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, uh, um, what, what was your rank? I was a lieutenant. I was lucky. <laughs> uh, First lieutenant. <laughs> that's very uncommon. Oh, I know it. I know it. Uh, I th I was the first lieutenant. I think I was in the army only about a month. So, no, I was real lucky. I don't know how come I got so lucky, but I did. It, it sounds like it was a lot more than luck. I mean, it sounds yeah. like you were, A, worked very hard, and it sounds like you were very good at what you did. Yeah. Yeah. Did that cause any animosity among the men that there was a lieutenant woman? I don't think so. I, I don't think so. If, if there was, uh, I wasn't aware of it, so. Did it become the type of deal where in war, rank kind of becomes invisible because you all had so much to do? Oh, I think so. I think so. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember what a day was like? What a day like? Was like, yeah. Well, I worked in the operating room, so we were working on a patient all day long on patients. Yeah. So, I was glad I was in the operating room because me oh my, the smell of 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 blood when you walk through the boards, it just almost knocked you over. So, did, did, I assume your days were long. Oh, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Did you, did you ever have downtime? I don't think we did. I think we, we worked every day as long as we needed to. Yeah. Well, these were our own soldiers, you have to remember. We had to take good care of them. Did, did they have names, or did they just become patients? Oh, no, I think, I think we called them by their name. Yeah, yeah. They were very, very, very good. Honest to goodness one little blanket to protect them. And, and the heat in the tent, of course, was just a little stove in the center. So. Are there any that stick out in your mind? Any patients that... that... I don't, not, not really. Now, it was interesting because you had mentioned that you had to treat everybody equally, so I'm assuming you dealt with some. Um... Oh yes, we had, for we had, English, and I don't know what other but uh, yes, we took care of all of them, whether they were Americans or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you have any Germans? I imagine we did. Oh sure, I'm. We did. So. We had two German boys that waited on us uh, off duty. They brought us the, the hot water, the cold water, and uh, every once in a while they said something. They said the Germans 
went like this, but not the Americans. They were very, <laughs> we were <coughs> everything to them. So were they young boys? Yes. And where do you think they came from? I don't know. Uh, well, they, I, we felt that they were older than 14 or 15, but they looked like about 14 or 15. Those boys had it hard before they came to us. Oh yeah, they, we were everything t to them. Did, did you, it sounds like you saw the patients in surgery and then after that, uh, they were gone. Uh, uh, yes, they, they weren't in our hospital very long because they went to England the following day. No, we didn't keep them very long. Yeah. So you probably really never had conversations with them. Oh, no. So that was a, that was a, a wonderful, uh, we had uh, the landing strip right next to the hospital. <coughs> And they were out on the field today and tomorrow. They'd be ready to go to England real rapid. That was really a miracle. Saved a lot of lives. Do, do you need it? Are you doing okay? Do you want to drink a water? Pardon me? Do you need a drink of water? No, thanks. Okay. Did, did, what type of... Um, Anesthetic? Did you have at that time for? Well, I suppose the same kind that we've always had. I suppose. Uh, I now, now that you ask, I really don't know. And I was at the table all the time, so but I don't know. Do you remember any of the areas that you were at as you traveled, or were you so busy in a tent that it was just another day in a tent? It's another day. Yeah, no. We didn't. Now, I heard um, Patty was telling me that at one time you kind of got lost a little bit and ended up uh, <laughs> maybe on the other side somewhere. <laughs> what, what happened then? <laughs> well, I we, uh, yes. That's right. Um, we, we, we were lost. And I spoke German when I grew up, but I didn't speak it when I uh, uh, was grown. But I sort of had a general feeling for it. And uh, here we were walking right into a, a German camp. And I caught the conversation. So, of course, we retracted. <laughs> oh, that was close. <laughs> so was that a group of nurses or? Uh, well, a nurses and corpsmen. And corpsmen. Yeah. I love that. So we retracted. I love yeah. that comment. Yeah. Probably quietly and quickly, I yeah. assume. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> what was the what was the environment like there? Was it hills or trees or Oh gosh. I, I don't even think we gave that a thought. We were just doing our work and moving on and moving and moving on. So we had wonderful corpsmen. Do you remember being tired? I mean, was, did it just wear you out or were you so full of adrenaline when you were working? That... I think we were so full of adrenaline that uh, I don't think uh, any of us ever thought of being tired. So. 
Now, you have a very interesting part of history also in the fact that you were a part of something that, that part of history is trying to deny today. But if I understand correct, you came upon Buchenwald, the, the concentration camp, is that correct? Yes. What, what do you remember from that? Well, uh, we, uh, <coughs> we took care of the patients, but we never went down into the camp. The, the, our male nurses went into the camp, but we didn't. And uh, so we took, we took care of them. And uh, like I say, we'd give them uh, a bowl of a cereal, and the next thing we knew, they said they didn't get anything. We had to watch them real close because they said they didn't get anything. So, but they were really good, good patients. Yeah. And they liked the American Army for some reason. The, I guess they had some uh, with the French, and they didn't like the French at all, but they liked the U.S. Army. And, and Joseph and the other little boy, um, they always said that the French went like this, but not the U.S. Army. They were loyal uh, young boys. They brought us the hot water, the cold water to wash. Like I said, the way we patted them on the shoulder, he knew whether it's hot or cold. <laughs> Did you have any idea at all when you came upon, upon Buchenwald what it was? I mean, did, had you heard about that type of a prison camp? No, we really hadn't. That was something, something new. And of course, the lady of the camp, she made uh, lampshades out of the skin of patients. Can you imagine? Being that cruel, of course they commit. She and her boyfriend committed suicide. Yeah. So. So, what would you say to people today who say that didn't exist? Oh my gosh, I think I'd faint. No, it was, it was real, very real. Did you deal with patients that had been injured in the camp? Have they been beaten or starved, or what were they like? Well, of course, they were dehydrated. They were, they were starved, yeah. We, we had to be careful how we fed them because we couldn't give them too much because their body couldn't take that, yeah. That had to be extremely hard, because oh. here you have a starving patient that you can't feed. Yeah, yeah. It was difficult. But we didn't lose any patients. Were you proud of your service? Oh yes, they're proud. We did many uh, wonderful things. Yeah. Of course, you know, when I uh, first joined the army, uh, my mother and father almost had to leave town because I was a floozy, you know. Why were you considered a floozy? Well, that's what they thought of of females uh, uh, taking care of male uh, people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. I knew I'd heard that in the service that um, one of the women that I interviewed years afterwards, the 
gentleman said to him, who was a ranking officer, said to, uh, Diz was her name, said, Diz, I know why you women were in the service. And, and, and uh, oh no, he wasn't ranking. He was enlisted. Said, you were just there to sleep with the officers. And Diz was pretty good. She said, no, we slept with some of the enlisted men too. So. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a battle that women had to fight because it was a new, new world for you, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Did you continue on in the army after World War II? Uh huh. Yeah. I I had twenty years in the army, and uh, ten uh, in in the uh, we went went on training for the army as a civilian, and uh, I I think that was. A, Ten years, but I had uh, a lot of time in the, in the military. So you were a career. I, yeah, I had a lot of time. Yeah. Did, it, did, I always say, that for a single person, uh, and I, I was an, an officer when I say this, uh, the army was the place to be because we were treated exactly. The same way as males. Yeah. There was no distinction. So. No matter what your rank was? That's right. So, how many other female lieutenants do you know? Pardon me? How many other women lieutenants do you know? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I think you had quite a number of us. Yeah. Because it's amazing to think that prior to World War II, that's right. Because you also uh, came out of World War II, and I assume had GI benefits. You could go back to college if you wanted to. And... Well, I I think I did go back to college. Yeah. Yeah, I went to the University of Washington, and also at, at Baylor, I took a special course. The Baylor course was a wonderful course. Yeah. Did did we learn anything in World War Two? Is Pardon there me? is there a message from World War Two for generations to come? Did we learn anything? Well, you took care you took care of our soldiers, saved many a life. Did you think of it as war, or did you think of it as a job when you were doing it? Well, I think we thought more or less as a job than, yeah. So. That's the amazing thing, because you were so busy that you probably, let me guess, you didn't know much more of what was going on than 500 feet this way, this way, this way, and that way. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, let me do this. I'm going to get your uh, photo album, and we'll kind of look through that, and maybe you can tell me a little bit. It looks like you've got a pretty good collection there. <laughs> so let's get that. I'm going to start my other camera. And, are you doing all right? Do you need any one about Buchenwald again? Do you remember any of the soldiers coming out that had been wounded and had taken care of their own um, wounds? And if so, what was oh, that yes. like? They uh, wrapped a cloth around, and uh, the skin had grown over it, that only the tail of the of the knot was left. That's how much it uh, it, it grew. So they had had a, a break or something. Uh -huh. And they uh, fixed it themselves. Set their own bones. Yeah. So what could you do for them in that case? Did you take care of them, or did you send them somewhere else to be? Oh, no. Oh, well, we took care of them, but of course, we couldn't do anything about that. But maybe they did at the next place. But all they could do is just cut, cut off the ends, because it was overgrown with skin. So that, that's all they could do. 
That had to be shocking. It, well, it was. Margaret, um, what did um, what did the civilian the people back home think of women who joined the army? Well, uh, we we didn't uh, meet any uh, civilians. No, I mean when the people back in the United States. Oh. What did they think of women who joined the army? <laughs> well, I think they changed their mind. So, for for a time, it wasn't a place for women to go. You were uh, no camp followers and husband yeah, stealers. Yeah. yeah. And oh yeah, my mother and dad almost had to leave town when I I joined the army. Do Do you remember coming home to tell them that you joined the army? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they knew I did. Oh yeah. And so did right away were they shocked? Oh yeah, or? they were. They didn't uh, object. And what did the soldiers at the front think? Oh, I think they liked us. So they, they didn't think you were floozies? No, no. They liked us. <laughs> were there any... Um, Romances? You talked about the one boyfriend to all of you nurses back in school. Oh, yeah. But what uh, about on the on the battlefield? Were there romances? Oh, yeah, there was a romance. Uh, a couple got married uh -huh, after the war. Uh -huh. But I think that was the only one. So did you meet any uh, people of interest? Oh, I, I, I suppose. Well, I don't think I... Any of them in, interested me uh, uh, in getting married? No, but uh, we, uh, you know, the uh, the army that was in northern Africa. Those boys did not know what danger was. They took us to. Uh, a midnight mass uh, one time, and uh, I prayed the rosary the entire way that nothing would happen because we just drove and the mud was up this high, you know. <laughs> but they, they went through the, the uh, campaign in Northern Africa, and they knew no fear. Wow. They were wonderful people, but had no fear. It was the nurses or the soldiers? Pardon me? The nurses? There weren't any nurses in North Africa, mm -hmm. just male. And then yeah. you were attached to Patton's, George Patton's Third Army. Right? Uh -huh, yeah. What, what did you think of George Patton? Uh, well, he visited us once. And uh, I had, oh, we had two battle stars. But I won a battle one night. So I said I could wear three. And I wore the three battle stars when he came to visit us. And what was the third battle star for? <laughs> oh. <laughs> one of our doctors was taking me home and he was going to, was getting fresh with me. And I told everybody I won the battle. Well, that man was so embarrassed because they knew who I was with. And I didn't keep my mouth shut. I said, I won the battle. <laughs> so did you take the battle star away from him? Yeah. Oh, well, no, I got the battle star from one of the uh, officers that came from North Africa. So you wore three, three stars yeah, I wore, I wore three stars. <laughs> so you you straightened that doctor out that got fresh with you? Oh, yes. <laughs> Everybody knew about it. He, could, he couldn't run and hide, poor man. <laughs> well, a crazy man. So it sounds like you knew no, you knew no fear also. No, I guess I didn't. The South Dakota girls, they, uh... 
Oh, he did say this. <coughs> he says, well, I did take you home. <laughs> See? To your tent. Yeah. <laughs> so he expected a little smooch or something for taking you home. <laughs> I don't know what I did. <laughs> but he, I guess he wanted me to be kind of quiet about him trying to get fresh with me. <laughs> and I wasn't. Did you ever have any R and R time? Did you get time away from the, or were you always in? No, we didn't have any R and R. No. Huh. No, we had we had no R and R. Did you did you hear about the, the incident where Patton slapped uh, a patient? What did you guys think about that? Well, I guess we didn't really think very much of it, but I suppose. We were shocked to think he would do it, you know. This soldier was just wore out. And here, here are we, he slaps him. That was a, a, a big thing against him. I mean, that the was... Army nurses didn't like that. Yeah, that was... Did you have... Bad? The Army didn't take kind kind to that at all. And did you have battle fatigue cases at your hospital? Well, I I suppose we did. But uh, see, I was in the operating room. And I, I was always thankful I, I was in the operating room because you'd walk through that ward and the smell of the fresh blood it just got you. And when you got uh, German soldiers wounded, kind of oh yeah, we had to take care. Did of you them. put them aside and take the Americans oh, no. first? No. no, according to Geneva Convention, you have to take care of them the same way you take care of your own soldiers. So you didn't. You took them in the order that they came in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how did the Germans feel about being captured by the Americans? I really don't know. You didn't have any trouble with them? No. So let's, let's go ahead and we'll kind of take a look at your collection here. You've got quite a collection of photos. <laughs> I'm amazed yeah. that, that, that you carried that with you and got it home. And Start here, I think. That's all for the back here. So is this, this is when you first, you oh, went well, from yeah. the United States to Wales, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tenby, Wales is where yeah, you we had, staged for the... Yeah, we had a, a Thanksgiving dinner with the mayor of Wales. Oh, mm -hmm. mayor of Tenby? Yeah. It took us five days mm -hmm. to travel from uh, where the, from Wales to our... Uh, to U.S. territory. You mean to your embark embarkation point? Or? No, I don't. So is this uh, in Wales or back in the States? No, no, that's overseas. That's overseas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, our, our colonel had 40 lovely <laughs> Forty nurses? Forty lovely nurses. Yeah, we had forty lovely nurses. Well, you're lovely in um, battle fatigues, yeah. mm -hmm. combat boots, and uh -huh. helmets. You wore the same uniform as the men. Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah there you are with a helmet on. <laughs> <laughs> this is... And you went through Paris? Yeah. Mm -hmm. when you... We were out on the railroad tracks. They took the engine away from us. Mm -hmm. So we were out there. Uh, I had to wait until the Army got us another engine. And how, how did you get from England to the continent? From England to the continent? Uh, and you landed in France. 
against me when I lived in France and we went on further up to Germany. Let's see, I think we, uh, I think I should have a picture in here where we, Maybe this is the coast. And these are all the nurses yeah. that you mm -hmm. served with. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's our chief nurse. Do you remember her name? Uh, Hayes. Hayes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was she older? Being a chief nurse, was she older than you were? Or? No, she was about our age. So everybody is about the same yeah. age. Mm -hmm. Now, what was the chief nurse's rank? Do you remember? Oh, uh, well, I think she was a first lieutenant. Also. Um, there weren't very many first lieutenants. Mm -hmm. I was a lucky one. I was a first lieutenant. And then what rank were you when you retired from the Army? Uh, well, I think a, fir a first lieutenant. No, when you retired from the Army. Yeah. You, you yeah. were a lieutenant colonel. Yeah. Um, yeah. And. But the highest, what was the highest rank women could get at the time was? Uh, uh, they were full colonel, but only uh, while they were, if uh, as chief nurse, she was a, a full colonel. Now, when she retired, she went back to lieutenant colonel. Mm -hmm. Of course, all of them retired with, uh, they didn't stay in the army, so they retired mm -hmm. as a full colonel. The colonel was the highest rank a yeah. woman could get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you were second highest, yeah. the lieutenant colonel, when you yeah. retired. What was your uniform? Did you wear a uniform when you were in the field in the OR, or was it? Um, no, we were wore a uniform. What What was it? Well, it was a GI thing, I think. I can't even remember. It looks like here you're just wearing a regular, the same uniform the men wore, just yeah. army fatigues. Yeah. Looks like combat boots and uh -huh. field jackets. Yeah, that's right. It looks like a lot of the time you wore a helmet. A regular, uh, regular army, World War II army helmet. Did you ever have to carry a pack? A pack? Yeah, with your... No. So they took care of everything for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you did wear a helmet at times. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of pictures here in a helmet. The helmet. What about weaponry? Did you have to train with a gun or not? No. You figured you'd be taken care of? Or were you even allowed to carry guns? Pardon me? You weren't allowed to carry a gun, were you? No. Under the Geneva Convention? No. When you look at these pictures, what are they? What what memories come to mind? Are they good memories? Sad memories? Or? Oh, I think they're good memories. Yeah. Do when you see them, are there friends that stick out, or were you so busy that were well, you always with the same group of people? Oh yes. We didn't uh, mix with any uh, civilians. No. But I mean, was it the same nurses together all the time? I uh, guess. Uh, the same, same nurses were, uh, were together at the 120th, yes. Mm -hmm. Did you stay in contact with any of them after the war? Um, no, we... Did your job and went home? Yeah. Margaret, here's one picture that you have a date on. It's April 6, 1945. The day we crossed the Rhine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That must have been a memorable day. Uh -huh. Yeah. That was a, a, a beautiful day. We crossed the Rhine into Germany. Uh -huh. <coughs> do, you, do, you remember, do you remember where you were when you heard that the Germans had surrendered and the war was over? Yeah. Do you remember where you were when the war uh, ended? I don't really remember. Here you are, uh, looks like doing laundry. Oh, yes. Uh, we'd wash in the ha helmet. 
wash in a helmet? Yeah, yes. Take a bath in the helmet. <laughs> then, then we'd wash our clothes in the... Uh, in the Same water? Yes. In the helmet? Yeah. Oh, yeah. At least you didn't have to eat out of it. <laughs> no, we didn't eat out of it. It sounds like you did everything else in that helmet. <laughs> These are our doctors. Were the doctors older or were they younger too? Uh, they were about our age. Yeah. And these are pictures from Buchenwald. Yeah. Did it? Did the? Here's the whole body there. All the bodies piled up. Uh -huh. Did it make you mad at the Germans when you saw them? Angry? Oh, I, th I think we were livid. That must have just been shocking for nurses. And doctors. Well, we didn't get to see that. Uh, our uh, uh, the men wouldn't let us let us see it. So they brought they, the patients they out. They said it was too too horrible for us to see. And this looks like they made people in town come yeah. and look. Yeah. So they brought the patients out to you. Yeah. <laughs> so was it kind of after the war that you really got the picture? I mean, you saw how bad it was, but did you get the full picture of it, or was it after the war that you really figured out even no, I think we got it while while the war was on. Yeah. And then when the war ended, you thought you were going to go to Japan. Um, you we thought we were going to go to Japan. Yeah. But then the uh, the war ended in Japan. When when we landed in New York, we knew. We didn't have to go to Japan then. So at that point, did you want to stay in the army? Did you oh yes. Decided? Yeah. Oh yeah. So even though you've been in the, the war zone, you decided you wanted to stay. Oh there. yeah. We were protecting our our country, I guess. And here's the trucks. Yeah. Oh yes. Well, oh that was horrible. We used to the truck would. Come close to us, and we'd go on the other, onto the other uh, car. <laughs> oh, what we didn't do! <laughs> it was an adventure. Uh, and this was all your unit. Yeah, the forty wonderful girls that our captain had. This was. Our chief nurse. And what was the name of your unit there? Uh, we were the 120th evac. Evacuation Hospital. Yeah. <laughs> this is packing for home. Yeah. Getting on the train. Did you get homesick? Pardon me? Did you get homesick at all? I, I don't think we. I did. You never had time to... No. Had you, prior to joining the Army and going to Europe, had you really ever been out of South Dakota? Um, <laughs> and North Dakota doesn't count. Uh, well, I guess I'd never really been out of North Dakota until I, I went into training. Then I went to Bismarck. And, and you had, what, one brother also in the Army in Europe? Yeah. And uh, did you, Peter, and did, did you know that Peter was... Oh, oh we, were, we were very close most of the time, but of course we didn't know it. Oh, until after the war? Until after the war. <laughs> were you looking for him? I mean, were you thinking about, was it Peter? Was that your brother's name? Were you thinking about him while you were over there, or... Oh, uh, I suppose I was thinking about him. 
<coughs> and he ended up in a hospital in England. But you, you didn't care for him then. Well, <coughs> some car ran, ran into <coughs> his vehicle, and uh, he, uh, well, I don't know, he had more bricks. He had this arm broke, uh, this part of the bro bones in the chest. He was all shook up. But he was also in the Third Army. A, a second army. He was in Second mm -hmm. Army. Yeah. But you didn't know it. That's did, right. I didn't know it. Did you know he was in Europe at least? Uh, oh yes, I knew he was, but I didn't know he was close by. Mm -hmm. Did you did you compare notes after the war to see if you guys had been in the same place? Well, of course, we of course we found out that we were uh, real close. Yeah. I think you were both at Buchenwald. Army. I think you were both at Buchenwald. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just hours apart. Wow. Huh. But never ran into him. Huh. <laughs> and this is how you came home. Yeah. By ship. Yeah. Tell us about that. Coming home, what was it like? How, where from? And oh, it, it was a delightful trip. I uh, I took the the bunk right next to the uh, window, so in case they bombed us, I would just open up and get out and float in the ocean. But the war was over. You didn't trust it. <laughs> yeah, so here, is this your bunk? Oh, that's, yes. <laughs> she was one of our, our nurses. She was always in trouble. <laughs> so is this, you had the upper bunk? Yeah. And she had the lower bunk. Yeah. <laughs> so she, when you say she was in trouble, she was in what type of trouble? <laughs> well, <laughs> all kinds of trouble she could get into. Now here you are in a in a white uniform. That was a that's a pre-war uniform. Oh yes, you know, uh, my brother Joe got this. Oh, a uniform for me. Oh, he bought your uniform? Yeah, he got me the uniform. And that uniform, and of course, the hat too. Many didn't have, have the hat either. Mm -hmm. uh, but I had the hat and the uniform. And that was passed around on uh, New Year's Day. We had to meet, we met the commanding officer. but. My hat and my uniform went <laughs> along so, the line. So each nurse that had to go meet the <coughs> doctor put your uniform on because yeah. you were the only one that had the white one. Yeah. And that's a pre-war uniform. Yeah. That's, so that marked you as kind of a, one of the more experienced <laughs> nurses that you had the white uniform. Yeah. <laughs> Tank driver. And that's a, a girlfriend of mine and her baby. Who, do you remember who took the pictures? Pardon me? Do you remember who took the pictures? No. I don't remember, remember who did that. Oh, this uh, 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 during uh, the lunch hour, uh, we would. Uh, I worked in outpatients, and we worked during the the lunch hour and gave shots uh, to people that needed them to up to upgrade their their shot. And this is uh, one one place. Uh, anyway, these two fellows came up to us, and we were. We thought, now who in the Sand Hill do those do they think 
there, that we'd wait on him, you know. Well, they walked up to us, opened up their coat. We gave them the shot real quietly, and we didn't say a word. <laughs> and they took your picture. This yeah. This is a publicity photo. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> do, do you think um, women have gotten the credit? Do you think women have gotten the, the credit they should for their service in World War II? Or do you think they're kind of ignored? Oh, no, I, I think I got all, all the credit. I think we did. And what do you think about women? Should women serve in a combat zone like that? Oh, I don't think so. You don't think so? But you did it. Um, well, that was, that was different. Well, I don't think so. I don't think they should. What was the best part of being in the Army? Best part of being in the army. <clears throat> well, we were treated exactly the same way that the men were. There was no distinction. If there hadn't been a war and you stayed at home, would you have been treated equal to the men, or would there have been disparity? Oh, oh no. Uh, there's only one, two things you could be. As a woman. Uh, as a woman, it was. Uh, what was it? Domestic. One was a school teacher, and another thing I really only, really only two things they could do, and neither one of them appealed to me. What, what appealed to you about nursing? Well, nursing, really. We did. Uh, we did things uh, on the operating room that uh, before the war it would have taken three days to get the patient ready for that surgery. And here we took them right off the field. Do you remember what types of surgery you were doing? No, I don't. I don't. I don't remember. But if I was in surgery. But I really don't remember. Did you do like amputations? Uh, no. no. No, we didn't. Was was penicillin a big help for people during the war? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. And how about the difference between like plasma and whole blood? Well, I I I I really don't know. <laughs> but you were getting whole blood. <laughs> yeah. So, do do you think that after World War II, there was more of an, e of an equality of men and women? Did it change the world as much as we think? Oh, I think so. I think so. I think it did. If you had to do it all over again, be a floozy. I know I was. Would I you would you do it again? Yes. Of course, I was an I was a, an officer, so you uh, you have to th think of that too. I mean, I was an officer, so you had it a little easier. <laughs> protocol protocol in the service is a good deal when you're an officer, isn't it? They take care of you. Yeah. When, when you, um, and I see you wearing an American flag, when you're at a parade or see a baseball game on TV or wherever it is that the flag comes out, what is that, what does the U.S. flag mean to you? Oh my gosh, the U.S. flag does something to you. It does something to you. Have you ever gone to talk at schools? Pardon me? Have you ever gone to talk at a school? Have I ever gone and talked to the schools? Yeah, like a classroom. Uh, I, I might have 
uh, right after the war. Are, are, your, are your grandchildren surprised that you're a veteran? Because a lot of times people think of men as veteran, and they forget women were there. But what do they, do, you, do they ever talk to you? Well, well I, don't, I, I don't feel any difference. I think we've always known um, that you were in the, in the Army, I, but I don't think we talked to those people. I, I don't, uh, I don't. It's, it's funny to hear you talk about it because you talk so common day about it, but yet you were A, a part of history, and B, you were right up at the battlefront there. That's which, right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Could you hear the firing? Pardon me? Could you hear the firing at the... Oh, front? yes. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> uh. <coughs> 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 One of our officers... <laughs> Uh, he, uh, uh, he he worked on uh, bones, and uh, somebody one day asked uh, ask him how he and I get along. He says, "Well, all she does is she asks me my date of rank because." I was a prankster. Well, I never did that, but he always, he always said that. She, she just asks me my date of rank. <laughs> did, did men salute you? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. So they paid you the respect that you deserved? Oh, being. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Our men were very nice to us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure meeting you.